Well, first of all, to place a structure in the park is a very um, uh, important um, assignment and a problem. Um, and so we wanted to do a building that would not only uh, be beautiful to see, but also add something to the park. This was uh, a newly acquired competitive bid project that Campbell had gotten, and it was the excitement of the office that we were privileged to figure out how on earth we're going to build this wonderful project. It grew out of the function requirement of placing the planetarium dome inside this building and having exhibit areas around it and below. And then the idea of after seeing the show in the planetarium to go through the stairway up to the roof of the building and then to actually see the star, the actual stars at night. And so that shape, which is a hyperbolic paraboloid, uh, grew out of that requirement. All architecture really comes first from trying to solve what that problem is about. And then once you understand what the problem is, then you go through a series of processes of trying different kinds of solutions to that. In the planetarium, it was a very simple requirement, and so the form came fairly quickly and we made a lot of models and so forth, and we loved the shape, so, and the client really liked it, so. The real uh, challenge is how do you exact the plans and specifications that were so wonderfully prepared by the architect and the engineers? And uh, they tell you what it's gonna look like, and how big it is, and all of those things, how it's gonna stand up but how you build it is really up to the contractor. So that whole idea of how we could design uh, farm work to support this wonderful hyperbolic paraboloid uh, was uh, the subject of many, many meetings and uh, many, many attempts to come up with a, a good design. I think the uh, engineer in me uh, fell in love with the idea that this wonderful shape is actually generated by uh, rotating a straight line inclined around a circle. And the fact that you could create this wonderful curved surface with a whole series of straight lines just kind of boggled my mind. And again, some of the uh, geometry and solid geometry and calculus that I had studied led me to believe that the, the real solution was there. As far as putting the concrete on there, it was a little bit of a challenge for the, for the laborers and the cement finishers to get that. You had to get the, you had to get the slump, which is a, the amount of moisture in the concrete, just right in order for it to stay on that lath. Otherwise, it would slide right off, you know. The first, even the first pool was a little bit, because that was on plywood, that was a little bit of a, of a challenge to the guys because they didn't have the friction element with the lath. The upper, upper portion was with, on, poured on lath. You had a friction element that held a lot of the concrete and it also was thinner. So you had less of a problem. The first pour was a little more of a challenge, but we got it, you know, it, it worked. And uh, you had to be quick, you had to get, get it right, you know, and, and there was a, 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 enough people on the job to, uh, to facilitate the placement and the finishing of the concrete just for, uh, for the next, uh, next operation. And I think, you know, one of the things that I always thought was kind of interesting and it sh shows the pride of authorship in a landmark project is like the caulking contractor would feature the planetarium on his brochure. Um, anybody that had even a little part of this wanted to say, hey, I was a part of building the planetarium. It was a unique situation, uh, an experience I won't ever forget as long, I don't have that many years anyway, but uh, it was really neat. I, and I appreciate the, uh, the opportunity I had to work on the project. And every time I come by, I make sure that I can stop for a minute and take a look at it. I think it was one of the, you know, the few structures that were built in the park, so uh, it was a, quite a responsibility. 
to be, um, you know, born and raised in the city of St. Louis and have the city of St. Louis have the, the, um, the gumption, <laughs> the creativity to engage somebody like Iowa Bada to create this masterpiece and this, you know, it's a landmark. And anytime you're associated with building a landmark, you know, it, it's just a, an honor and a privilege. So that made it special that you're creating something that, um, you know, to this day, we were driving by and my six-year-old grandchild says, uh, that's grandpa's building. 